Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. I'm a producer and electronic musician based in Brooklyn, also known as Astrolith. I also head up the sound design program here at Dubspot in New York City and online. And today we're going to talk about FM8. I want to make a, a bass sound that's like a little bit aggressive, but that's a little bit different from uh, some of the other things that I've been doing. We're going to do something that's a little bit more dancey, a little bit more kind of like like a London style sort of dialed back bass a little bit. It's not going to growl, it's going to thunk, okay? So uh, make sure that you uh, cast in your frequent flyer miles. Let's do it. Okay, so I have this little melody that I put together over here uh, with the bass, and I've got a new instance of FM8 on here. It's fresh. It's a fresh instance. I like starting fresh. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn F all the way up. Remember, A through F are all operators. They represent operators. And an operator in an FM setting basically is the word for an oscillator that has its own amplitude envelope. All of these are identical. Now, right now F is an audio signal because I have it plugged into my mixing board down here. You just click and drag to do that. Okay. Now, it's just a sine wave at this moment. And I'm going to just soften the release slightly so we don't get those clicks. Okay, how do you like that? I like it, thanks, nice of you to say. All right, so now I'm gonna activate E by right clicking on it. And the process of frequency modulation is basically this. We're doing audio rate frequency modulation where it's basically a really fast vibrato. Those of you who have set up a really awesome cheesy 80s LFO vibrato like you know I love, that's sort of distant cousin of FM because basically what we're doing here is we're doing the same sort of routing. We're modulating the frequency of one oscillator using another oscillator. But in this case, both the oscillators are paying attention to what's going on with my keyboard. See, if I plug in E, then you will hear that it plays the same thing. All right, and let's listen to F. It's identical. But if I click and drag right here, I can actually send the signal from E to F as a control signal, and it's going to modulate the frequency of F and, do, uh, and create what are called sidebands, not sideburns. Sidebands, okay? Sidebands are basically a word that we use to represent uh, these tones that pop out when we do audio rate modulation. This could be with ring modulation or with FM, uh, to name a couple of examples. So as I bring this up, it's actually going to create more harmonics. We're actually growing and building a sound, which is what I love about uh, Frequency Mod. Let's listen. <laughs> It's pretty cool, and we can create some metallic sounds, and the harder we push it, the more harmonics are going to be created. Okay, the other thing we can do is we can manipulate the tuning of each of the operators. We can also change the waveform, and that's going to change uh, how many harmonics are created. It's also going to change their position. Uh, the ratio changes their position, so it's like, it's like changing the flavor. So, uh, here's the bass line that I have going. Okay, so and there's some other drums in there. I'll let you taste those later, okay? So let's go ahead and let's start carving this guy out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, use my amplitude envelopes to set how the sound changes over time, okay? You may be saying, but Evan, it's an amplitude envelope. How are we going to change the timbre using those? And the answer is if we use the amplitude envelope for the modulator, which is E here, that's the control signal. This guy's in control of the harmonics and the movement over time. So if we take our envelope and just we, we pull it in like this, I'm just going to add a little bit of release, not because I want this to be a long sound, but because I don't like that clicking. Let's listen to what happens. So putting these envelopes in place helps a lot. I'm also just going to go over to my master section and put it in monophonic mode so that it's only going to play one note at a time because uh, this is a bass sound. That's how I want it to go. All right. Now, I'm going to go over to E and I'm going to experiment with changing the waveform. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to switch it to one of these formant waves. We have a lot of different flavors of waves in here. We've got some, some of the usual suspects up top. We've got some special ones. We've got these TX waves from the Yamaha TX series of synthesizers. They were FM synthesizers, by the way. And then we also have these formant waves. And the cool thing about these formant waves is that they're rich in harmonics, but not too rich, but they emphasize certain uh, harmonics within the series. So they're sort of like a sawtooth. They're rich in harmonics, but they will emphasize the given harmonic that it names. So the second formant will emphasize the second harmonic, third formant, third harmonic, fourth, etc., etc. 
Now, I'm not saying anyone has to memorize the harmonic series here, but a little bit of a basic understanding of what it is will really help. Basically, we're playing with all of the different tones and harmonics that would come in your standard waveforms, but we're sort of picking and choosing which ones we use at the moment. The sine wave being the simplest one. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab one of these formant waves, and you're going to hear immediately that uh, the sound brightens up. I'm going to switch it now. Switching. I love these guys. And as you can hear when I when I switch, we're going to emphasize different harmonics. Ooh, that's a fun one. Let's switch it over to the second format here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push up the index a little bit more. And what that's going to do is just make it a little bit more rich in harmonics. Okay, so this is a little much right off the bat, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to mess with the ratio of F a little bit. And what we can do here, and what I like to do for a bass sound, is just make these two operators an octave apart, okay? So I'm going to go to F, and I'm going to punch in a ratio of 0.5, just by double-clicking, and then I punch it in and hit Enter one more time. 0.5, Enter, okay? Now F is an octave below E, and this is going to create a, a thicker bass sound, something that I find really pleasing. Let's listen. And we can make it more intense. You can adjust these to taste, but what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to, let me set this back to the second format. And now I'm going to pull the envelope back into where it was so that, that we get this nice plucky, thunky, sort of housey kind of bass. And the timing that you use is totally up to you. So there's sort of a little bit too much sustain in the sound you can hear. It's just, it's not dying out quickly enough. So I'm going to go over to F. You can use a different formant wave if you want. And if it's too aggressive for you, just dial back on E. Here it is with the kick. Okay, Evan, this is all right, but you know, it's not really jumping out at me. Okay, I got something for you. X is a special operator. It's like a green beret, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use X as a, as a saturator. It actually has a built-in saturator, and I'm going to use it as such, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag right here, send F to X, and then I'm going to plug X into the mixing board down below. And we can change how heavy that saturation is. make sure that this, these releases are all set in a way that I like. There we go. So if that's too much, you can always mix and match. Let's just plug the dry version back in and let's mix in the amount of saturated signal that makes us happy. Maybe you want all of it. Maybe you just want a little bit. Now, if you want to add some more harmonics to the top, make it a little bit less subtle, you can always add another operator. Just be sneaky about it. Make sure that you don't go too over the top too quickly, because remember, with Frequency Mod, we're actually building harmonics here. So if you get too many, you're just going to get noise. So I'm going to push this just a little harder. There we go. Now, there are a couple other things we can do. If we want, we can actually do a unison detune here, uh, sort of like a chorusing, just add a couple of voices. It's gonna make it a little bit louder, but it's also gonna add some uh, nice texture.
I might avoid that. I might just leave it at one. But one thing that might be kind of nice to do is add a little bit of reverb. I happen to have a reverb right here, and then we can also do a little bit of sidechain compression, and that's gonna make it really sit in this mix uh, nicely. <laughs> So hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas on how to approach using frequency modulation to build sort of straightforward, funky bass sounds. I really love sounds like this. They're very useful in a lot of genres of music, but experiment, have fun. But just remember with frequency mod, you take it one step at a time. Uh, as a little icing on the cake, I'm just gonna add some velocity sensitivity to E, dial it back. And there we go. So once again, this is Evan Sutton. You can catch me here at DubSpot in New York City or online. I'll catch you next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.